cyber dopamine here so inside this little box is an rtx 5090 mobile gpu and with just one usb-c cord i can plug it into my xbox ally x or flow z13 and boom ultra graphics at 4k rtx turned on 200 frames per second and this is just the start because this new xg mobile from asus comes with the thunderbolt 5 port for even better performance this is not sponsored. I'm going to show you what it's like to use this and to have one. I'll show you how it can run heavy games like Borderlands 4 at 4K. And I'll also show you the limitations of this eGPU to help you get an idea of where we're at when it comes to this amazing technology. So let's start off with the most important part. Everybody wants to know the reality of this portable GPU and the performance. So the reality is just super simple. I've got my LIX desktop mode right and then there's the 5090 just sitting there and i've got that little usb cord so what i do is i just grab it and i plug it in i'll just pop this up on the kickstand my obviously my monitor is connected to this xg mobile my mouse and keyboard my audio interface for the speakers and sub but that's it it's already connected so we'll go ahead and uh, open up some steam let's play some arc raiders once you plug in the GPU and you're in the game. Like I'm on ultra graphics, everything right now at 4K. This wide angle, it's a lot's going on. And I'm at 155 frames per second. You do not think that this is coming from the Xbox Ally X. You are just, you know, you treat this like you would any gaming PC with the alt tabs, Spotify, you name it. But here's a look at Borderlands 4 on high settings. And as some of you know, this game is known for being the most challenging newer release due to its extremely intense requirements and not so intense optimizations. And at 4K, we're seeing about 50 to 60 frames per second. I know a lot of you guys are already anticipating the limitations of this eGPU, right? The bottlenecking the limits with USB 4.0. I'm about to show you exactly those limitations, but we first have to figure out why this external GPU is a thing in the first place. Also, you guys don't have to sub if you don't wanna sub. If it's your vibe, it's your vibe, you do you. It's a trending come up when it comes to PC gaming. And it's because a, a lot of us like the idea that you can take a device anywhere you wanna take it, right? Just like this Ally X. And, you know, I come home from work and I'm like, all right, I want to hop on with the boys, play some Arc Raiders or Battlefield 6. And you plug it in. Not only is it charging your device, but you're pushing your games to the absolute extremes with the resolutions, with the freaking graphics set to ultra, RTX turned on. You know, it's the same reason a Switch is dockable on a TV. It's kind of like that little station for it. I made a video last year where I bought an external GPU dock. And then I would just put on my RTX 4070 on top of it and use it as an eGPU. And you guys freaking love it. And that setup is still the way to go if you're just like a handheld central user. And I still prefer this way over this XG Mobile simply because, yeah, it's more stationary, but like you can throw whatever you want to throw on top of this thing. If you want to upgrade, it's super easy. And you can pull more power. It comes with a power supply inside of it, right? So. That's a big thing, but you know, this XG Mobile is just used for if, if you really do travel, right? You kind of buy a handheld to travel with. Um, this would give you the power to travel with, right? But the XG Mobile, I mean, you can take that anywhere. You really can. It just fits in your bag. It's a lot smaller. It's more compact. You might be paying more. You might be drawing less power, but at the end of the day, like, it really just boils down to how you prefer to use your power or your eGPU. And I'll make more videos on, on these kinds of setups because they are so freaking fun. But maybe you have a dual citizenship and you still need to play your games or you need to edit or do graphics design. This is what this eGPU is for. My Xbox Ally X and my Flow Z13, the devices that I can test this on, only have USB 4.0, right? This XG Mobile can do USB 5, Thunderbolt 5. And so in order for me to justify owning one of these, I really have to bank on the future, right? Eventually, handhelds start shipping with USB 5 or Thunderbolt 5. But for the time being, we are quite limited. Asus is just super ahead of the game. 
and they've already released it for us to own. So obviously you can expect less performance with USB-C 4, 10 to 20% less performance than if this EGP were actually inside of a gaming computer. So with this current setup, Arc Raiders, as you saw, hits 150 frames per second at 4K, maxed out. So this is obviously Battlefield 6. But here's what I'm noticing straight off the bat. With a lot of games, they're pretty CPU intensive, right? But as you can see here, we're at 104 FPS with no frame gen or anything, of course. But the GPU is only at 60. The CPU is at 80. You're only as fast as the slowest person in the pack, right? When you're out camping or hiking. If we throw this Flow Z13 into the picture, we connect this bad boy to the same GPU. It's got the HX395. Super powerful processor. And as you can see here, we're getting 140 frames per second as opposed to the allies like 100, right? The CPU is at 74% and the GPU is at 91%. So not only are we limited in a sense that we can only use USB 4.0 at the moment, but with the Xbox Ally X and the Z2 Extreme inside of it, that thing can only do so much. And with the port, with a 5090 mobile GPU, you know, that is definitely overkill. There is no doubt about it. But even though you can see the, the Xbox Ally lack on CPU intensive games like Battlefield 6 with, you know, 64 players, there are still benefits to having this 5090. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. But the big thing to take away from what we're seeing right now is that the XG Mobile is more or less future-proof, right? And with Thunderbolt 5 performance, we can expect to see a 5 to 8% decrease when compared to the exact same card, GPU, in a gaming PC with PCIe. Thunderbolt 5 really bridges that gap to where it is relatively comparable to a desktop version of that graphics card. But keep in mind, this 5090 that we're seeing inside of this enclosure is the laptop variant of the 5090. Now, this is where things start to get pretty freaking crazy. Even though you're limited, you still are getting the, the new NVIDIA perks, right? The new features. So this is super crazy, totally slept on from what I see on YouTube and on Twitter and things like that. DLSS 4. Okay, you got that new upscaling, it looks amazing, great. But more importantly, what I am being mind blown at the moment with is the freaking frame gen on this 50 series GPU. Okay, so here it is on the freaking 4K TV, okay? Maxed out settings arc raters and we're at 114 frames per second. So take a look at the millisecond of latency, okay? When I start moving around, You'll notice that we're always hovering around 35 to 30, okay? So watch what happens when I decide to turn on frame gen. This is what's so crazy. I always thought frame generation on these 50 series cars was like a ripoff. Everyone was trashing it. But watch this. If I turn on DLSS frame gen, it says auto, okay? My frame rates jumped up to 170 and my latency is the same as it were before I turned on frame gen. I don't notice anything. I'll go to frame generation again and I'll do 4x frame gen. Okay. Look at the frame rate. We're at 260. Look at the latency. We're at 40 milliseconds. We're about five to eight more milliseconds more. Okay. That's not a big real world difference. Okay. And look at, I mean, why well, you can't see it the TV, but, but look at that. Look at the frame rate. Most of my life goes towards freaking trying to rank up at the top of the leaderboards in Battlefield 6. It's been like that for me my whole life. And the difference between 30 milliseconds and 40 or even 50 is not that big of a deal. You can still play competitive games like Arc Raiders. I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm extremely sensitive to latency. I really am very aware of that stuff. And 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds, you're gonna feel it if you're like hyper fixated on it, but real world, come on now. You can say what you want, but the reality is that you're still gonna get rack up some kills. You know what I mean? 
But look at this freaking cyberpunk for a, for a big immersive single player game, bumping up this frame gen and then going to 200 FPS with just a minor small amount of latency is so freaking worth it. So something that is really cool is with the setup like this, typically, like in my last video, I did a year ago about eGPUs. Um, there was always a process to get this all started up for the first time. And there were some rules you would have to follow, right? Like, for example, booting it up for the first time and setting this up always took a lot of work. You had to put it in the terminal command and do a couple of things here and there. But this was super simple to set up for the first time. All I had to do was open up Armory Crate and the drivers were ready for me to be installed. And I just went ahead and installed them. That was it. Done and done. But what's really freaking cool about this setup right here is you're gaming with the homies and it's like, all right, we got to go. I got to go to work. I got to go travel, whatever it is. This is running right now as we speak through that. But I can just simply unplug it. And I'm not kidding you. It doesn't glitch out like it typically does with other eGPU setups. I'm ready to go. Like we're good to go, you know? And that that's so convenient. You know, I can just plug it in again. And it really is like a, this is just your power station, but you have one device to unite them all. You're always traveling and this is your go-to. That's just like the sickest freaking thing. Also, I'm just going to leave the freaking, uh, you know, the, the benchmarking and the one percentiles to the next guy because I, I just want to play games on it, honestly, and just show you what it can do and what it can't do. Um, so I apologize for not being super in depth like some of those PC guys. But yeah, guys, freaking, yeah, all right. But thanks for taking the time to check this video out.